Portrait Artist of the Year, what if these famous artists had applied to be on the program? Let's find out and get started. And if you would consider it, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. So, let's go. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach and lately recapper of Portrait Artist of the Year. Thank you for joining me. It's been really exciting seeing people join and to talk to people about this program that I really, really love. Of course, it has faults, but uh, so do we all. But what I wanted to do today is make a video as if some of the famous artists that we know have applied to the program. I want to look at some of their self-portraits. And I think you'll be surprised because these are not necessarily the works that we're accustomed to seeing. The other thing that we have to remember when we reflect back in history is, for the most part, we are seeing white male voices <laughs> in paint, of course. But I could only think of one female artist from the area, era that I could include in these self-portraits. And I was only able to find one self-portrait of her. So remember, when we're looking at the diversity of this program, these are very new voices that we're getting to see. And as we know, our museums are very populated with a white male artists. It, it just, it's, it's just the way our, our civilization has, has, uh, has evolved. So that is exciting to think about. Uh, and I do think about future museums and that those future mu museums will have a much more diverse range in terms of uh, people who are participating. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say, there's always another thing. The other thing I wanted to say is one, also one of the primary differences I think between any painting that we see from the past and, and current painting is for the most part, the methods have stayed pretty traditional. And we've talked about technology on the program before, so I'm not gonna cover that here. There's a separate video about that, but paint itself, there are colors that we can get now that were not available. It did not exist. Because remember, prior to synthetics, these paint pigments were made, I think for the most part, from natural materials. Um, I'm thinking especially about the blues. A cobalt blue, for example, would have to be ground you know, into a powder and then emulsified with something. And that's still true to some degree to this day, which is why, you know, you sometimes wonder, well, why does the tube of paint cost so much than the tube of brown? You know, when you're buying your neutrals, those colors are, are relatively uh, inexpensive compared to when you try to get into colors that don't appear in nature as much. When I'm talking, I'm looking at you reds, <laughs> I'm looking at you blues. Those are your more expensive tubes and tend to be your more fugitive colors as well. So without further ado, that was enough to do. Let's get started. Okay, bye-bye. So our first artist up is Claude Monet. And of course, we know his work very well, but we don't necessarily know his self-portraits. Isn't this beautiful? Wow. And yet, I maybe I'm missing something, but this looks as good as many, many paintings that are showing up on Portrait Artist of the Year. It's just amazing the, the ability that's out there now when it comes to just darn good painting. Of course, we're influenced by these artists. So when they were making this art, it wasn't derivative. It was, you know, the first time anyone had kind of put colors together the way the Impressionists did. So it was certainly groundbreaking because of that. And also, these are just two self-portraits, one when the artist is young and one the, when the artist is, young, is older. But, you know, we all know the body of the man's work which is a tremendous. That's, that's really what your art career is based on, your body of work. All right, so the next one up is kind of surprising to me, Edgar Degas. He's known for his portrait uh, pictures of the ballerinas. And uh, especially in the work, his works tend to be, I, I think, pastels for the most part. But here's a picture of him as a very young man. And this kind of speaks to the wide age range that we have on the program. We have some really, really young artists, as well as some older artists, of course. And so we don't know how much time on canvas, how much time on paper any of these people have done. But we all know if you, if you stay on task, your art will improve as you get older. And there's something just so intriguing about this older portrait of Degas. Oh my, 
It tells you so much. And it's not about accuracy, is it? It's about feeling and emotion and it's just so telling. It's, you know, it's a painting that's a poem. Our next world famous artist is Edward Manet and his work is just so extraordinary. I mean, the length and breadth of it is, is, is mind boggling. But let's look at a young portrait of him. This is younger and certainly less formal than the second portrait that we're gonna see here. It's, but I'm just astounded at how contemporary it looks. And we know the judges are looking for contemporary works. So I'm not sure what they would think of this. I suspect it's not contemporary enough, but, um, but how groundbreaking it was in the day. And here's another painting when he's older. Just, you know, absolutely beautiful work. But, but again, I think that some of the paintings that we're seeing on this program are, are equal to the task, which is kind of amazing to think about. Okay, Pablo Picasso. Well, you know, this is going to be one of those wild cards, as we know happens on the program when someone really steps outside the box and does something that we, we are kind of intrigued by it or never seen before. So here is a painting that he did a self-portrait when he's an older man. And, you know, uh, it is hard for me to divorce how I feel about Picasso as a human being from the work. So I do struggle with that, but, uh, but I can get past it. Now let's look at a younger portrait of him. Look at that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's amazing. It's amazing. Certainly shows how he has influenced many, many artists and, and the way we look at portraiture or painting it in general. Now the next up is Winslow Homer, and he's certainly not known for his portrait work. He's known for his, um, mostly for his, I would say for his landscape work. And we watercolor artists really revere him because of his paintings of the Adirondacks and Bermuda are just so amazing. I should, I actually, um, of course, I just remembered his oil paintings, there are very many of them. But here's a very, very, um, you know, academic, very studied portrait of him. So he clearly had the European training. And I just wanted to insert, I think, one of his most famous paintings. You can see here if you just... If, if his name, when you hear it right now, just doesn't ring a bell. But, uh, but I was thrilled to find a self-portrait of his and be able to include it here. He is such a fantastic watercolorist, and I really, really get excited about his use of neutrals and then his pops of red. All right, Marie Cassatt. This was the only female that I could think of or find. And, um, you know, she really celebrated mothers and children. And she is an exception in terms of, uh, you know, we just don't see many female artists. But that's a self-portrait of her. And, um, uh, I mean, wow. I mean, I have to say, I'm not sure we've seen something as exquisite as this come up on Portrait Artist of the Year. Yeah, it would be a tough, tough call. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's why, that's why this work is timeless. John Singer Sargent. John Singer Sargent course is known by watercolorists. We, we also um, are very enamored with him. But here's a very young portrait of him. He was known for doing portraits of society people. That's how he made his living and he made a very good living at it. But this is a young portrait which is, um, you know, just to show the evolution of his work from um, a more immature uh, painting to a more mature painting. Look at the stature of the man. Whoa. <laughs> Um, he, he certainly looks like the, uh, the people that he was painting at the time. Certainly, you know, very, very upper class kind of look there. Uh, Edward Hopper. Now, Edward Hopper is, um, known for paintings, as you know, like Nighthawks and paintings that evoke, uh, loneliness. Uh, I think this young self-portrait of him probably tells us a lot about who he was as a person. I don't think he and I would have gotten along very well at all. He was one prickly fella. <laughs> and, but the painting, I think, looks very contemporary, as does, as does this one, an older portrait of him. I think we've seen this kind of work on Portrait Artist of the Year, and, and please, if you disagree, let me know. But I was just so surprised at how rich the, um, the length and breadth of the painters that we're seeing is. 
it's we we live in a very very lucky time that people are able to uh, participate. Unlike you know, in years ago, it would have been uh, certainly was not as easy to enter the art world as it is now. Rembrandt. Well, Rembrandt. I mean, we have to remember Rembrandt a little bit in context, which is you know you're coming out of these very stiff paintings with the subject sitting ramrod straight and looking directly at the camera. And it was all about lace and jewelry and what they were wearing. And Rembrandt was all about the light on a face. You know, how does the light hit a face? So at the time, this was really kind of revolutionary, but um, it is not the kind of painting that the judges like now. It is the standard for, for teaching really, really good academically based painting, which I don't think is taught in the United States anymore. If it is, let me know but it, I think you'd still find it in training in Europe. Paul Cezanne, also not known for his portrait work, but certainly known for paintings of, you know, apples, pears, oranges, his uh, tablescapes. I really enjoy Cezanne for a, a variety of reasons, but look at the triads going on in the background. Look at all the color he's put in that negative space. Boy, he, he just... He knows how to build forms so well. And uh, yeah, I think, I don't know that we've seen something as extraordinary as this on Portrait Arts of the Year, but we certainly can see where the influences come from, and that's a good thing. Now, Jackson Pollock certainly is not known for his figurative, figurative work, so I found this portrait, which was <laughs> pretty surprising just to find one at all. And, um, you know, clearly he's not known for this, but. You know, this probably reflects the training that he got at the time as a as an artist. I don't even know if he went to art school now that I think of it. Yeah, but here is, you know, the kind of painting that he's known for, which uh, just in the context of Portrait Artist of the Year, I thought it would be fun to add in because, uh, you know, this is kind of what they're looking for, something different. All right, Vincent van Gogh. Well, of course, Vincent van Gogh, the greatest colorist that ever lived. And when I'm talking about colorist, what I'm talking about is he finds the correct, he doesn't paint what the eye sees, he paints the exact color and value that he wants to insert instead of a color value and temperature, frankly, it's, it's those three things. And so he uses and inserts different colors for what his naked eye sees. As far as I know, I mean, maybe this is what his naked eye saw, but I don't think so. I think he's doing color value swap outs all the time. But he's also concerned with lost and found edges, temperature. There's even texture happening here. There's so much. Everything thing I can think of in painting, he uses. And when I say color value swap outs, see, I'm talking about this. This is his bedroom. And we know that the bedroom did not look like this. We know the bedroom would have been full of neutral colors, but he does color value swap outs, temperature swap outs, and you know, this is the result and it knocks the world's socks off. And so good for him. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.